Hi there, I'm Keith Norris, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use a sales process template uh, that we've created in Excel to help map out your sales process activities. So if you found this video, hopefully you've found the corresponding Excel template. If not, there should be a link down in the comment section down below. And I'll just walk you through how to use that. So basically, we've broken this down into a few different steps. You can see the steps here as they count from one, two, three, four, five. And what we'll do is we'll start with number one. It says identify your sales stages. And what these are, these are the major stages that a sale, and probably any sale, in fact, most businesses that I've come across from products to services from across different industries generally follow this same flow. Now, your business, you might have some slightly different words and terminology, or it might mean something slightly different. And so the idea of this template is to let you use this as an outline, and then you can adapt the words and the terminology to your specific process. So another picture that shows the idea of this workflow, and this is maybe something that you've seen before, more of a from top to bottom or top of the funnel down to the bottom of the funnel from a, a marketing or a, a suspect lead uh, to a prospect, something that might be more of a sales lead. What's the step that is required to go from, from one stage to the next? So what we're starting out by talking about are the stages of your sale, not the activities that move between the stages, but the actual stages. So another way of thinking about this is if you had a, uh, you know, each deal in a folder and you were going to put them into piles representing where they're at in the sales process, that is what we were referring to when we talk about the sales stage. So you'll see here my picture with the arrows and then also my Excel document walk through a set of sales stages. Just to give a quick acknowledgement to Patrick Hansen, who wrote the book DNA Selling, which is where this particular model and picture is from. This is it's a very useful sales process terminology, the most useful that I've found in over 15 years. Okay, so suspect. Generally, these are people who you have not been in contact with. These, these are probably people that your marketing organization thinks might be interested in your product. So if you're using this template and you, and you like the word suspect, then great, use the word suspect. If you have something else that you might wanna use for that uh, terminology, then you can, you can simply type that value in here. The idea of this spreadsheet is to give you a template that you can adapt to your own terminology, your own language, adjust your own definitions. Prospect, somebody who has come to your website and basically raised their hand to some sort of an effort that your marketing team may have done. Qualified prospect, somebody where you have done an initial level of qualification with them. This is, I usually like to refer to this as the, the we think, they think stage of the process where we as an organization think that there might be an opportunity to work with them and they also think that there might be an opportunity to work with us. So that's where we move into some of the selling activities. And then the next step, which I would call hot, a lot of times this is, this is where you would prepare a quote or send a proposal. And then pending, this is where you've got a, I like to refer to this as a written or verbal commitment to buy. This might be the contracting stage or just getting, getting uh, payment details worked out. Maybe you've got things like credit check or something that belong in this pending stage. And then finally closed one. Now, of course, some sales processes uh, are a smooth transition into some sort of an operations workflow. So just for the sake of that, we've added a couple of columns here to this worksheet where you can have post fulfillment steps. Maybe you've got a product that you've got to pack and then you've got to ship it, or maybe you've got a service that you've got to deliver. Um, you know, so you could have some other st uh, stages that are post sell. Okay. So step one, identify your sales stages. Step two, who is involved? And this line right here, the first line is who is the primary person that is responsible on your entire team for the particular step of the process? So in this case, I've got an example of BDR, a business development rep. Maybe this is a marketing rep. Maybe they're responsible for the first step. Obviously, if you've only got one person who's generating leads and closing the leads, this is going to be the same person all the way through. If you're using a, uh, a handoff in your sales process, you might have something that goes from marketing, maybe to a telemarketer, and then finally to a sales rep. And then maybe you get a sales engineer involved. Uh, or somebody to create an actual proposal. So this is just where you would map out who's involved at each step. And then these are, this is basically who else needs to have access? Who else is maybe interested? They're not primarily responsible. The, fo the folder representing this file is not on their desk, so to speak, 
but they've got an interest in following this deal. Step three, this is where we ask the question, what data needs to be captured at this particular point in the process? So if I'm in the suspect stage of my sales process, I'm gonna have basic information like name, phone number, email, maybe I've got some sort of social media profile, maybe I know their job title, their industry, something along those lines. As I move into the prospect stage, there's, a, there's another layer of information that I'm going to capture. Uh, maybe I'm getting a little bit more detailed uh, about their company size or the type of need that they have. Maybe they have responded to a, an email, a mailing, uh, you know, some sort of a lead generation activity that we've done, gone to an event where we talked about a particular problem that our company solves. And so they've raised their hand and said, yeah, I have that problem. So we would, we would probably want to indicate that at this prospect step. Now, the qualified prospect step, uh, some organizations might refer to this as like a market qualified lead or you, you know, some other terminology that you have. But the basic idea here is, are their needs a fit with what you do? And are they as close to an ideal fit as possible? This is the stage of the process where you want to identify that kind of information. So if you are putting this, this worksheet together for your business and your industry, and again, anytime you're working with this template and you need to insert some more rows because you've got more fields, you can, uh, I'm on a Mac version of Excel, but Windows works basically the same way. I'm right clicking, I just click insert and I can insert as many rows as I want and I can add individual different uh, pieces of data that I might need to gather at that particular step. Of course, as I go into what we call the hot step or the proposal step, uh, I'm going to be interested in uploading a proposal. Uh, if I'm in the pending stage and you're in, an, in, an, in a sale that requires a credit check, is something that I need to, a piece of data that I need to gather and add to the file. And then in closed one, maybe I'm looking for a check number or a transaction number if it was a credit card, uh, that, that kind of information to process the sale. All right, so the next question that we ask here is what activities need to be completed at this step? And I've got two yellow sections here. The first one is what I'm referring to is, is the critical activity. You might think about this as what is the last thing that needs to happen before it can move from, from this, from one stage to the next stage. And in, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to pull this other picture up for just a minute. So think about this as the one thing. Now, again, there might be many things that need to be done between moving from one stage to the next. But what is the last thing? Maybe it's manager sign-off um, before a proposal goes out the door. And I ask you to think about the one major thing because I know that there also is a lot of little things that might need to be done in the process. And I've given you an area to, to list those as well down below. So an example, um, you might have designed a bunch of emails that you can send out to a suspect to move them into the prospect step. You don't necessarily need to send all of them to that prospect, you just need to make contact and confirm some sort of an interest. So making some sort of contact with them might be the critical path activity. There's always gonna be one critical path activity that moves from completing the step to the next step. If you're, if you're having trouble between, choosing between two, then uh, summarize those two steps. In the case of moving from qualification, uh, from qualified prospect to hot, I might need to gather information about their decision process, if it's a good fit, and their budget. So I'm going to lump those together. And I'm going to say I need to determine if they're qualified, and that's going to be my critical path step. Now, um, in, in that example, I might have th other things that need to be done, uh, like verify decision, uh, verify uh, legal. Maybe there's some, you know, some legal concerns or some compliance concerns that you need to need to deal with as well. Uh, the next section here says possible results from this step or this stage. If I want you to think about this in terms of what's going to happen next when you complete this step. A lot of times you're going to either move forward, you're going to move backwards, or you're going to just um, just going to postpone. Now this step right here in all fairness is the reason that we ask this is if you are actually using the process builder inside Plan Plus Online, it does a great job of letting you map out the workflow from one step to the next. So this is where we would map out and say, if a certain thing happens, 
we're going to move maybe to another, uh, an entirely different sales process. Maybe I determined that that this isn't a uh, direct sale, but these that, that this person that I'm working with is is a potential channel partner. And so I, I might have a totally different sales process for working with channel partners than I do for working with direct sales. So if I determine that they are, um, you know, a potential channel partner, that might be one of my possible results here. And then this last section here, step five, is just where we're looking for a list of sales assets that are useful at this step. What are the type of resources and assets that you might need to create before you, before you uh, accelerate your sales automation system? You don't want to, you, you don't want to hire a bunch of people, throw them into a sales automation system, and then realize that you haven't given them any of the tools, like the initial introduction email. You haven't given them any proposal templates. You haven't given them any contract templates. So this would, this right here is a list of sales assets. I'm going to call them email templates. Uh, maybe it's case studies, maybe it's um, um, security documentation, anything that you might use during the sale and, um, and what step it's most likely to be used in. Okay, so that's just a quick summary of how to use this template to adapt to your own sales process. This is a, this is a very helpful activity if you're just trying to create a common language. Remember, as we talk about building a culture of productivity, one of the best things you can do for your organization, your sales organization, is to get everybody speaking the same language. And when we talk about speaking the same language, we're talking about using the same words to define the same step in the process, using the same terminology to describe the same set of activities that needs to happen. So if you're using this with, with Plan Plus Online, this is a great step to go through before you put your process uh, before you build a process in the Plan Plus Online process builder. If you're not using Plan Plus Online, this is a worksheet that you can still use to outline and identify your sales process activities. And you can use this as a stake in the ground to share with the other people in your sales organization to say, hey, this is the way I see our sales process. Um, and let's have a conversation about it. What are the critical pieces of information that we need to use? This is all excellent information that can help you configure your CRM software, your customer relationship management, your sales automation software, your pipeline software to help improve your sales process activities, to create more automation and to create more success in your sales. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I encourage you to subscribe to our channel below or to check out some of the other videos associated with this. And if, you can, if there's anybody else in your organization that could benefit from this information, please share it with them. And uh, go ahead and, and subscribe to the uh, channel down below. Thanks. Have a productive day.